Hey guys, Adam from Request to Endorse. So today we're gonna do a video on a bug out bag. And actually we're gonna make a bug out bag right here, not live with you guys, but live enough. And the reason being is I get a lot of questions about, hey Adam, you know, if I'm gonna buy a bug out bag or some kind of staging kit, you know, I don't wanna waste a bunch of money on a bag that I hope, hopefully, and I do say hopefully, we'll never use. So what we did is we went and found a kind of a high speed bag, but also on the low end. And actually this is a SOC bag uh, that we got from CampingSurvival.com. CampingSurvival.com donated this to us to do a giveaway. So we're gonna give this bag away. They run about 74 bucks. If you go on to CampingSurvival.com, use the promo code E2E, you'll get another 5% off if you're looking to buy something from them. They have some great stuff. But anyway, I wanted to find a bag that was very low price. You're not gonna spend, you're gonna spend under 100 bucks. This bag is identical to one that I use at work for my Kim Bio mop suit, but I don't wanna use that bag uh, for this kit. So. We went ahead and got one like this. I actually got a couple different bags like this, but I've used a bag very, very similar to this for probably almost 10 years and it works pretty well. So guys, what we're gonna do is the idea of this is to make a bug out kit or a 72 hour plus kit with a, with a bag of this much volume. You're gonna be able to put a lot of food stuff in there and also a lot of shelter stuff. This might be, depending on where you're at, a grab bag in case of a fire if you're in a high fire area or a grab bag in case of a flood if you're in a flood zone or if you live in Tornado Alley and, or for whatever reason, you probably would hunker down at your, your home, but if for whatever reason you had to leave very quickly, there's a fire in your home, grab this and get out. So you might also wanna store copies of special documents, also data in a thumb drive or other hard drive. Most of these SD cards nowadays are very, very inexpensive. I mean, you can get 32 gigs for 40 bucks. So any special documentation or any other files, especially of medical concerns, you can throw that in there as well. So we won't cover that kind of stuff. We're just going to focus on gear and other things. You might also want to have some cash or some other uh, valuables to be able to trade or whatever in these as well. My good friend and our lead instructor for the North of Equipment Door Bio Plus is going to help us out on this. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm joined here with Bobby Plude. We've got a good assortment of gear here. Here's the tricky thing when you're making a bailout bag or a bug out bag. There's a couple of key considerations. First, where's your location? What is the weather conditions? What are the other challenges? The second is gonna be how much money you're gonna invest in this kit. Ideally, this kit would sit in your vehicle or near your door uh, of your house, or your home or whatever, or maybe even a, even a survival cache. Right. You know, so this might not be your top flight gear that you're going to use for camping or anything like that. So you want to spend money on quality items but at the same time, you don't want to break the bank. The next thing too is, are any of these items sensitive to temperature changes from going from hot to cold in your vehicle? You know, your vehicle in the summertime can get very, very hot and get very, very cold in the wintertime. Remember candles, food, water, things like that. Yeah, you have to take that in consideration as well. But we got a good assortment of items here that we kind of thrown together. We're going to pack this bag to see how much we can get in here and uh, go from here. So let's start, let's start with shelter. Because shelter in this kind of situation is probably the most important thing. Right. It's the top of the list for our rules of three. Mm -hmm. And for this, we chose a, uh, a German Flecktarn half shelter as one of the pieces because this can also be used as a, as a poncho. Also, if it's some kind of situation where you might need a camouflage, uh, it, it, it helps that way too because this can be taken out of your bag and thrown over your whole bag. And it's inexpensive. It is inexpensive. I mean, these things cost about 15 bucks. Yeah, about uh, and we're able to take this with some straps and actually throw this on the bottom here so we don't have to worry about it taking up any volume in our pack. So we'll throw that down there. Uh, other things for shelter items, we did throw in here a high visibility tent because the opposite situation might be true. You might want to be seen. Right. Uh, so we want to throw in this, this, Bobby and I both use this in our EDC kits, in our vehicle kits. Um, if you buy one of these, buy two, test it out, get, to, get used to it. This is like an extra large uh, trash bag with a hole on both ends. But you need to know how to be gentle with these things because right. you can easily well, you destroy know how these. To put them together too. Yeah, absolutely. If not, you'll tear it up. That's right. So we're going to go in here and we're going to find a nice spot. Let's find a nice spot with this bag to put it someplace uh, not, not too close where, uh, where we're going to get to it every day, but you don't want to dig out our whole bag to get a piece of shelter. So I'm, I'm going to say it in here, Bobby. What do you think? I would think. Put a right, is there a pocket in here? There's a pocket right. There's a pocket right there. Look at that pocket. Uh, that pocket's not big enough. This pocket is. It's, it's not big enough. All right, so we got a shelter pocket in this bag, guys. Mm -hmm. We'll give you guys a look see here in a second. Shelter also is your clothing, what you're wearing. Absolutely. So, I mean, I mean even this poncho could be shelter. Yep. Uh, we th we've thrown a lot of uh, variants in here. Here's another uh, coat. 
That could be short. This is the packable coat. You guys have seen that in many bags. The reason I love this, and, and I got to tell you, I've had friends when we go out to do different events, they forgot their coat, they're cold, boom, Adam's got them covered. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the SOL, SOL heat sheets is one of my favorite heat sheets. This thing is very, very rugged. Uh, we've had this one specifically, this is already opened, uh, used in many, many classes. This has been in several videos actually unfurled. This is actually the one I did a test on. I think you used it for a video back in the day. We've used several classes. Oh, we've had this. Actually, we've had one guy that's actually slept under this, just put in some, some acorns and made a button on there, tie some 550 cord, and use this as a lean-to. So this is going to go in our shelter. We also have one of these emergency bivy bags as well. Uh, these are a little bit more fragile. They'll poke a hole in very easily, but we just threw this one in our, our kit. So we're going to throw that in the shelter bag as well. So we're, we're over, we're very redundant with the shelter, uh, but the cool thing about that is, is that you can never really have too much shelter, you know? Especially in the compact size that this comes in today. I mean, I guess uh, you back in to... the day, they, they ended up, they had to use canvas for everything. Absolutely. So they had to actually take away from all this other stuff because their shelter was so heavy. Absolutely. And, and again, too, if you look at some of the stuff that's designed for military, that stuff is designed to be used with other members of your unit. And now I've seen photographs of uh, large shelters made where guys take, uh, they take the rain ponchos, they tie off the neck, they stretch them out and they make a box. You know, they'll have ro rocks in there to, to have a certain area where the water will flow down. But anyway, you, you got five guys getting into this one shelter using their, using their clothing to actually create that shelter. Um, so anything else on the shelter size? We have this bag right here. We'll probably throw this someplace up front. So we could throw that poncho in there with that, small enough. Yeah, there's a little sleeve in here. Mm -hmm. We'll throw that bad boy in there. Something that you want to get to very quickly and everything else. All right, so we got, we got shelter covered. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about that again. Okay. If, I mean, in a, if you get into a situation, you want to be able to pack stuff that you can get quickly. Yeah. If it starts to rain, on the outside, that's quick, and you got it on. Yeah, you're not going to dig at the bottom of your bag, getting all the contents in your bag wet, and exactly. then also getting yourself wet because it's taking you so much time to get in there. Good point. So I do want to talk really quick about medical kits. Of course, without sh shelter, fire, water, food aside, you know, your security, safety, and health is going to be ahead of that because, of course, you can get hurt and injured to where the, the elements might kill you in three hours, but an injury or a lack of safety can kill you a lot quicker. Uh, so we do have an AMP3 IFAC pack. Uh, Andrew Abbott, our editor-in-chief, wrote an awesome article about the AMP3. We'll be giving this one away here. This is from our good friend, USNER doc, David Pruitt. Uh, so this is a whole kit here. I won't be destroying this kit uh, and showing you guys all the components. If you want to check out Andrew's article on equipsindoor.com, just go check that out. Uh, we will be giving this one away here real soon, the whole complete kit. Uh, but this is a great kit. Now, this is a little bit bigger than you might need. Uh, for your everyday medical, but of course this is a bug out bag situation. You want something a little bit more beefy to put in there. Now, let's let's even take it a little bit further. Uh, say you have this in your in your vehicle, mm -hmm. and you come up onto uh, an accident, or you actually keep doing uh, your thing. Uh, you guys are making a run into the woods for something, and you grab this with you. All of a sudden now, you've run into a uh, survival situation because of a medical yeah. emergency. Absolutely. So I mean, all this stuff would come in handy for something. And there's like great additions that you can throw onto your bug out bag. This is just one I had right here. Of course, if you want to match more and don't want black on khaki or khaki on black, whatever, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, but this is a medical, this is a, this is a bag that you can actually just pull off real quick so you can deploy the contents. Something like this would fit in here perfectly. Of course, you can split out the contents. You don't need that other bag. And then uh, throw this on the outside of your bag, which would be the best place for an emergency medical kit. Um, so we'll throw this back on there real quick and you guys get the point. We'll leave this one outside because we would molly this on our kit. So go ahead and throw that over there yeah, with that good. pack. All right, so next one, let's talk a little bit about fire because um, fire would be the next important thing. It allows you to make food. It allows you to uh, supplement if your shelter is weak, uh, boil water, create water, a signaling device if you're trying to communicate. So, so many different aspects go into what fire can do. And not only that, but you know, in, in a situation, if you're caught up, and if you are by yourself, a fire is a friend. It is. It is. It's a, it's a common. Keep the boogeyman away. Absolutely. Oh, actually, there was one thing in medical I forgot to talk about. Little pocket CPR kit. I think everybody should have one of these in their kits as well. Uh, but this would be very, very front pocket. There's one outside here uh, where stuff you grab a lot. Throw that, that kit in there right there. All right, so for right now, we have some uh, fire starters. Uh, these are uh, great chef. These are actually used to light charcoal briquettes. You guys will be seeing some... Uh, 
more videos with these here in the near future. Uh, Mr. Robert Oliver has been using these pretty extensively and uh, he's, he's given them the old E2E approval. These are awesome fire starters. So we're gonna throw a pack in there so we always have a sure way of lighting fire even with a simple lighter or match. Okay, one other thing for safety and security, I did throw some of these, uh, some of these N95, these duckbill masks, a couple of those in there. Now these won't last for very long once you start using them. If it's a pandemic issue, uh, maybe a little bit of dust and debris, it'll help you out, but we're not gonna go into that, but this might just get you through there. 20 we're, minutes. 20, 20 minutes each, there you go. Uh, these might, this might just get you through there. Uh, that it'll do better than a handkerchief or a uh, scarf or something like that. We'll put that, uh, we'll put that up front as well. Over here too is my micro kit. This will probably go in your pocket, but this does have tin foil razor blade, sewing kit, fire starting kit, uh, water purification tablets, all in one thing. We might throw that in the bag as well. Okay, so we talked about shelter. We got our fire. One thing I got to say is. They're so cheap, even though they can be a pain in the butt to use sometimes, the ferrocium rod or ferrocium rod with the magnesium fire starter, as you guys can see, this has been loved and used a lot. You can't really beat it, man. You can't kill them. Um, because you can just grind away at this magnesium. This will start dozens of fires. You do need a good quarter size amount of magnesium before you light it up, uh, but it will definitely start semi-wet tender uh, and definitely start dry tender. Well, I mean, that's, that's one of the things people should really realize is with these, you don't just use a little tiny bit. Oh yeah. You do have to use a, a lot. Size. I, if I can get more than that, I do. Yeah. Because it goes up like that. I know some guys that even shave these down and put it in kits. So they sprinkle that stuff in there because it's not going to damage it's it if it gets idea. wet. That's so the other thing we have here is one of these old gel fire starters. It's like a sterno type thing. We've used these before. This is an alcohol gel. So one thing we have to add some caution to you is you will not be able to see the flame. All right. So you get close to it and yeah, oh yeah, that is very hot threw these in there. A lot of these are surplus. They do come with wooden matches, uh, but they can be difficult to use. And also, you kind of got to shake these, compare them to the weight of other ones because they do get micro fractures in there and they kind of evaporate. So you can't get stuck with a bad one. We did, throw some mat we did throw some matches in here just to talk about matches. Matches can be a good thing. Some people love matches. I'm not a huge fan of matches. If I do have matches, they never stay like this. They usually always go in some kind of match case or container. Uh, but there's some companies out there that make some amazing containers and matches. We're going to chuck those over here for the side, uh, but we will put in there a nice big lighter. I will say though, a big lighters are nefarious for uh, the fuel running low or not being able to start. The more moving parts, the more chance of a mechanical failure. As you can see, this one barely has enough life left. And of course, Remember, white. Remember in real cold weather? Yeah. They won't, they won't oh yeah, that's right. That's true. Hold them under your arm. And uh, they also, white ones are notorious for uh, not working anyway. A uh, little canister of cotton ball and Vaseline. This is just a little pill canister. Throw some stuff in there. Make sure you uh, take the label off of this if it's not your prescription medication. <laughs> and then we'll throw, the, we'll throw the big fire packs in the back over here. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of water. We have our old water purification tablets. You know, you really can't go wrong with those. They're inexpensive. They can stand there a long time. I like uh, to have extra water containers. These, these platypus bladders are great. You can screw on the other water filtration system that we have in here that we use a lot, which is the Aquam Aquamira Frontier Pro. That's great. And remember, with a lot of these water purification tablets, um, you can buy them from the military, you can buy them from civilians, but make sure you buy a, a good quality. Uh, there's a lot of junk out there. Yeah. So really watch what you're now doing. we wanted for this kit, we wanted to upgrade to something a little bit bigger than the than the Aquamira because first of all, the Aquamira only does about 25 gallons. Uh, this thing does 264, and this is the Life Straw water filter. Uh, very neat. It's very similar design. You just stick this in a source of water and you start drinking. Um, now, one cool thing about this, this is a brand new one. We're not going to take it out of the packaging because I want to send this away to somebody. This, again, is another item that's been donated to us by CampingSurvival.com, so we will have a good giveaway here in the near future. But these things are very inexpensive, and uh, long as you don't, as long as you place them in some place that protects them, you're probably not going to destroy this thing. So pretty cool all in all. So, of course, for water, too, some kind of water container, old military canteen, you can't go wrong. This is something that is, this one right here specifically is from 1945. It's already lasted that long. It's going to last through any bug out situation that I'm going to live through. So throwing something like this in there, you have your canteen cup, you have your cooker, you can put water in here if you want to, but watch out. Don't just leave water in someplace stagnant. That can be a problem. You can get sealed bottle, bottles of water 
or you can get certain bags that are going to be antimicrobial or you can put a little bit of bleach or something in there as well but you know be careful with your water now remember it, this was made in 1945 you don't know where it's been that's right you don't know who's used it uh, stainless steel won't hold any poisons in the metals itself that we're aware of mm -hmm. but you what you want to do is sterilize it and i mean throw some bleach in there shake it up let it set for a while dump it out boil some water in it and remember take the corks off the corks hold bacteria yep and uh, we take the cork out of these and we use rubber o-ring in ours and it works very well so instead of that one right here this one's got a little case already attached to it so the same thing we can just close this on the side of the bag so we're not using up any volume on the interior of the bag. Okay, so we'll throw that one on the side. And then last but not least, a water reservoir in there. Again, if you're gonna put water in there, you gotta be careful. It's gonna be something that you be very disciplined into changing the water frequently. I mean, you can do something if you live in an area that's high with, uh, like I said before, uh, natural like forest fires or stuff like that. Um, this might be something you want to go in there and do during your weekly, you know, cleaning. Take the water out of your kit, uh, you know, change it and put new water in there. Now there are some of the bags that are antimicrobial. Again, you might be able to leave water in there a little bit longer, but it's always a gamble. So you got to be careful with that stuff. And let's set the bag up for a second so we can throw this in here. There is an area right here for water. I'll go ahead and throw that in there. Hold, pull that open there, Bobby. I got it in. Throw that right in the sleeve and go in there water there it is right there it's oh, it's stuck on my watch in the sleeve. There, it is. there we go and now our water is ready to rock and roll so if you want to you can throw this in here for right now because we don't need it information you've got to have information if you're in a bug out situation you got to get out because of something you need information people have been known to die trying to get information yeah. and, and, and they've gone in an area where they shouldn't have. Absolutely. You need information. You need to carry a radio, some kind of radio. With batteries, without batteries, they make a hundred different kinds of crank ones. Yeah. Be careful what you're buying. Some of this stuff comes from Hong Kong or China and it's junk. Some of this Chinese stuff is good. This one right here is from, this is from China. Yeah. But this is, a, this is good. This was actually made for uh, survival situations. Um, I'm not going to tell you where we get them because uh, I can't remember. <laughs> but I can find the information out for, on that for you. But.